In episode 2, I go over why Liu Bei's faction is completely broken. He pays half upkeep on most early game units, which are used for a majority of the game, which allows him to zerg. In this episode, we get zerged on by 3 of Liu Bei's armies, 4 actually if you count his other army that's barely off screen. And it's not just the fact that he can zerg that makes him so powerful. He's a decent general himself, but his other two generals get insane weapons and skills. And if I were to try to point out Liu Bei's weaknesses, I would say he really doesn't have any. This all happens a bit later in the episode, and our tale begins where we left off in the last episode. In the next episode, I want to push towards the city of Hanzong, as that is owned by a vassal of one of our enemies. But before we do that, we have to take care of Huan Zizang, an army belonging to Dong Pishan. There's also Liu Ji's army, which belongs to Lady Kai's faction. So we're going to have to take care of them first, and hopefully we're going to be able to expand a bit. We're currently still at war with 11 factions, so we're not going to try to expand too quickly, but I think we should definitely go for the city of Hanzong especially because we do already own their silk trader and owning the city and the silk trader together will be beneficial. So for the next 45 minutes, I've never had this happen, but my audio corrupted. And so I'll just do a quick voiceover of what happened. We were able to catch Liu Ji, but our second army was not close enough, so they couldn't help out. The enemy had pretty solid units, so advisors did predict that we lose. And to give us an edge, I decided to take this duel that Chang Gong Ying requested of Zheng Jing, even though she started the duel with only around 40% HP. He did manage to get her a bit lower than I expected, and it was a fairly close stool, but Zhang Jiang won out in the end. This combined with Lu Bu taking their archers to Pound Town was quite a big morale hit for the enemy, and eventually they just gave up and decided to rout. We then started heading towards the city of Hanzong, and Ma Tang sent a full army through our territory. At the time, we were not at war with him, so I was thinking maybe there's a chance that he's just going through our territory, and I don't really have to worry about it, but this was pretty wishful thinking. Ma Tang has three territories that are right on Chang'an's border, and it's only natural to assume that he would be heading towards Chang'an to try to expand his borders. And he did end up declaring war on us. We just traveled through this hilly forest terrain and it took us I want to say three turns to get from Hanzong to where we are now and I kind of knew that Ma Tang would try to attack us because why else would he be sending a full army over here but like I didn't care I just had to get to Hanzong. Once I got halfway through that hilly forest terrain I had committed myself towards taking Hanzong. On the bright side Chang'an's garrison is I think as big as this guy's army and we're just gonna have faith that it can hold out. I do have faith that it could hold out but we're gonna employ Niu Lang to help and we're gonna give him four of these Jian sword guards. Fairly expensive units and and we're now losing 1182 per turn. However, I don't plan on keeping him on the field for long. If, and at this point, I think when we do capture Hanzong, which should be this turn, and we're done fending off Ma Tang's attack on Chang'an, I can make him the administrator of Hanzong, and he will use this new retinue I gave him to defend it, and he himself will pay for the retinue's upkeep cost somehow even though it costs way more than the salary we're paying him. I think the argument could definitely be made that this was a bit of an oversight by the game developer. And now I think about it, I'm just going to give him two more Geon Sword Guards. They're way tankier than the Axe Bands he had. And with that, we're going to say bye bye to Hanzong. And attacking it is going to make people that already hate us hate us even more, which is completely fine. The enemy have no artillery, and advisors predict a close victory. Though they do have 2k units, with 5 trebuchets, I don't see this being that close. It puts our reinforcements on the worst side to attack from. If we do attack either of these gatehouses, there's 3 towers that can hit us, pretty much no matter what. On this side though, we're only attacking into a fort tower and an arrow tower. And since they have no trebuchets, I just put everyone on this side. I would rather them just clump up all their units like this, so if our trebuchets do miss, say they go over the fort tower like so, they end up just splashing on their units. And whoa, these things are being accurate today. I don't know if they got better or what, but that thing's actually burning. Let's go for this arrow tower now and get it burning. Now we gotta go for the gatehouse. Will one volley be enough? The tower's dead. The gate's dead. I wonder if we have the angle to hit these spearmen. Looks like we actually do. Oh yeah. Some of them are missing on the wall. I'm gonna conserve some of the trebuchet's ammo. And I'm gonna see if I can do this spear guard trick. Where are you at? Okay, they're firing at me. And I go in turtle stance. If we have it on, they won't shoot at us, but if we toggle it off, they do start shooting, and then as their arrows are in midair, we just toggle it back on, and all their arrows are blocked. I've been toggling off and on, just waiting for my other army to get over here, and this archer group just got pissed, and now they're just unloading all of their arrows on us, and now they're completely out of arrows. This archer retinue gave up as well, and they're unloading all of their arrows into our turtled spear infantry. Draining their arrows was pretty unnecessary, as we had a far superior sieging comp. They didn't really put up much of a fight at the gate, and we were able to kind of just break through. I did end up conserving a lot of the trebuchet's ammo, until the enemy would clump up near the middle of the city. I got this pretty nice volley, which you can't really see, 
because the enemy uses block ability, which does not work on flammable rounds, by the way. They do explosive damage, and there's no block in that. But yeah, these archers start blinking, and pretty soon after, a lot of their units start routing. Oh, that was actually a fat rage. That spear guard was at 120 HP. The only one that doesn't route is their commander who has unbreakable, and so he can't route. And so I sent my generals to the victory point where we had to wait out for 200 seconds until we capture the city. I don't know if he realizes that there's three of us and one of him, so he needs to kill us in order for us to not capture his city. 30 seconds, now's the time to save your city, man. What are you gonna do? You're just gonna sit there on the flag and do nothing. I'm not gonna lie though, that's probably what I would have done. I mean, it's either that or charging a Lubu, Zhang Jian, and Zai Hu Yuan. And we did actually capture Wii U. We do not currently have any commanders, and the dude is brilliant. We'll employ him. And we captured Huang Fu Ping as well, who has really good traits. Honorable is not my favorite, because it reduces the chance to capture enemy officers by 10%. Kind just gives some nice bonus stats, and scholarly gives him extra experience. We'll employ him. And I'm thinking we definitely sack and withdraw this for 10k and 40 infamy. It is gonna kill off 80% of the 1 million population, but I really want that infamy. And I guess that was all Zhang Fu had because his faction got destroyed. Hanzong actually has some pretty nice buildings. Government Provincial Workshops gives us 400 more income. Irrigated Farms gives us 3 food production. Craftsman Workshops is kind of terrible though. It gives 75% more income from commerce and only 15% income from industry. Hanzong has zero commerce income and most of it's coming from industry. I don't know why they built that. That was kind of dumb of them in my opinion, but we will demolish it. Dong Pishan is sending a full army over here and this does actually kind of suck because it's going to take us a few turns to get back and I'm hoping they can't all siege Chang on at once or something. Dang Shang died at 63. Wait I've never had a general die before. Like that's not good. Our administrator at Hidong who has all of our trebuchets is 66. It would really suck to lose that guy and I hope we don't lose his retinue as well. Dong Pishan is going for a jade mine. That's slightly annoying. We only have 962 and they have 1774 but I'm still going to fight this on the field. So I've just been kiting around with our cavalry and they're actually still up. Dudes are doing a lot of work, just distracting and being really annoying. And the enemy ended up just jamming all their units into one choke point. They're not really making much progress though. And if they are stuck at this choke point, we do have a set of towers over here that does have range to hit these guys. A lot of their units are like half HP and all their bowmen are completely out of arrows. And we still got a lot of tanky infantry up. All of our units are at 100 morale for some reason. I'm not really sure why that is. They have unbreakable, so they do not suffer any morale loss, but I don't really know why. That is completely huge though. Like these horsemen should be running already. We just killed an enemy general and I found out I actually was not using this mounted saber militia. I sent them to kite earlier on, but then I guess I just completely forgot about them. And they are not looking good on morale. Looks like they're all gonna, oh my God, I can't believe we actually won that. And it wasn't even that close either. Like we have so many units still up. They killed off their own general lost 1200 units and fed us 1k and only took out 400 of our units looks like dong pishan has got to step his game up ma tang sent over another army so now they have two armies inside of our territory i think at this point i'm going to commit both of our armies to smashing ma tang for good and so we're gonna have to somehow defend hanzong if we make Niu lang the administrator of hanzong a he's gonna give it a bunch of nice bonuses the main one that's nice being the reduced construction cost as we will be building new buildings at hanzong he also will use the six unit retinue we gave him earlier to defend Hanzong at no additional cost, which is why it's really good to stack up administrators with really good troops. Since we've been spanking on Dongmin so hard, he will now offer us tribute due to the balance of power shift, and I guess that just means he doesn't want to fight us anymore because we've taken out so many of his units. Doing this makes peace with Dongmin, but it also gives us 35% of his income. Because he has quite a few territories left, this ends up being a pretty big chunk of change, and it boosts our income from 683 per turn to a bit over 2200 per turn. As we were pushing on towards Wudu's Silk Trader, Zhang Kai attacked Zhang Jiang in a night battle, so our other nearby army could not help out. We were able to retreat, however, and Zhang Kai was now in a very precarious situation. And now we can double team him this turn, but I'm sure he's gonna run. Shot Fury. Yeah, we could actually just finish this guy off this turn. I was gonna ignore him and just go for the Silk Trader, but might as well just take this guy out. Two generals that have a 100% capture chance. After easily destroying that army, we captured all three of his generals, which was a pretty big blow to Ma Tang. We then absolutely demolished his Silk Trader with our trebuchets, only losing 17 units in the process. Ma Tang is attacking our Silk Trader, and he has 1350 units, and we have 1322. He does have one mounted Lancer Militia, and I'm gonna have all the towers and archers focus that. That thing can break our infantry. 
infantry line pretty hard. It's pretty low. They only have 12 left. I don't even think it got a charge off because it charged into his own units. And yeah, like G militia are just not the best for breaking an infantry line. Four groups of them have not really made a dent in two of our groups of saber militia. And on this side, they did not do much better. We have three saber militia up and their two saber militia are blinking. That one's running, that one's running. And apparently the other side ran too. Another interesting decision by the AI, and they actually allowed us to capture their strategist, who has understanding for six extra cunning. After taking Wudu Silk Trader, we found out that Ma Tang himself was hiding out at Wudu. I would like to say that Ma Tang put up an epic defense and really tore a hole through our army before getting taken out, but that was just absolutely not the case. For some reason, throughout a lot of the early siege, he was defending the wrong gate with a lot of units, and so we were able to easily break through and and eventually we got them to route pretty easily. We only ended up losing 500 units and we did end up capturing Ma Tang and executing him for his red thoroughbred. Oh whoa, Zhang Yan is in the candidates. His faction by the way got completely wiped out so that's why he's here. That's awesome, we'll recruit him. I did not know that faction leaders go in the candidates menu and unfortunately he did get maimed so he loses 4 expertise and 5% melee damage. But he does have this decent armor piece which gives him fatigue immunity and these dual war axes which are pretty nice. <laughs> Dude's upgrade path. The AI did not give him the best upgrade path though. Like for example, he's level 6 and the AI did not try to get him Flames of the Phoenix, which is not something a champion normally has by the way, but it would be really good on him because he also gets Binding Fury, which is more of like a single target ability, but the AI just decided not to go for that stuff and went for just kind of okay stuff like Vengeance gives Scare, which reduces enemy morale, but me personally, I would rush for Binding Fury and rush for Flames of the Phoenix. But then again, I'm not legendary AI. I may just not yet comprehend their genius. We took the town of Wudu, and now we're gonna take its copper mine. They do have a general here, but that shouldn't be a problem for our trebuchets. And we can also fight this as a night battle. They do have more units than us by quite a bit actually, and a lot of our cavalry are completely wounded. So yeah, they are charging out at us, but since it is nighttime, they do lose 15 morale. Ooh, that saber militia got pounded. Oh yeah. Nasty hit on their infantry. They are losing a lot of extra morale here. And yeah, they're actually running. And we actually captured Zhao Zhang, who apparently part of the reason why he ran so early was because he's cowardly. He loses 10 morale, so he runs easier. I gave Zhang Yan his own army, dropped him in Hanzong, and had him push towards Boxy's Toolmaker, which is owned by Liu Zhang, who has been annoying us for quite some time. I gave him the strategist Wu Zi, who has the upgrade to allow us to fight night battles. Composure also does give us fire arrows, so we can just burn these towers down with fire arrows, and it doesn't take a whole lot of time. Doing that only costs us around maybe 30 archers but now we really don't have to worry about towers i also put sui yuan jin in the army and i gave him the unique cleaver of mountains mainly because we needed some aoe and he does have flames of the phoenix i'm not sure if giving him the cleaver of the mountains does impact that damage but that was a pretty good flames of the phoenix hit and that was a bit more difficult attacking without any trebuchets they did end up killing 500 of our 1800 units but the enemy did have three generals there and the main thing with this army is it's just gonna be nice to have an extra army so that i can like for example push towards this guy while also being able to send zhang jiang back to possibly defend against an attack from liu bi i don't know what he's doing in our territory with a full army okay sima yi is now in the candidates dude it has so much cunning what dude has zero satisfaction because he desires a higher court position <laughs> imagine if i ended turn and he just left next turn i think that'd be it for a lot of people they'd just be like okay i'm done i can no longer watch this idiot if we make him the grand excellency this will give him 108 more satisfaction and will increase our income from industry by 15 percent in order to do that i have to pay him a bit more 250 per turn but it actually made our income go up by 20 and so yeah he has 162 cunning and that's without any extra items by the way like he doesn't have any accessories we can give him this jade horse for eight more cunning he doesn't have a follower we can give him this guy for six more cunning maybe we should give him a bow he actually might do pretty well with that it only gives him two less cunning but it allows him to fire from his mount with his now 174 cunning he gives his retinue 85 percent more ammo and he gives the army 20 more military supplies he also has brilliant which is an amazing trait to have on a strategist 15 percent more ammo for our units and minus 30 percent ammo for enemy units the only issue i have with him is the ai gave him a horrible upgrade path like he doesn't have resourcefulness for flaming shot or extra military supplies no precision for the extra armor piercing damage and firing rate and he doesn't have 
composure for fire arrows and night battles. Like I'm not sure where he starts, but the AI chose a complete PVE path. He does have this ability Whitewater though that has an infinite effect range and every 4 seconds it increases the cooldown of enemies abilities by 5 seconds. And so if he's on the battle, enemies cannot use any abilities. That's actually pretty strong. Oh no, Ma Yu died. He was our trebuchet master. I'm wondering if all his trebuchets are just gone. Oh, there goes 6k of trebuchets just vanished. I've been kind of planning for that guy to die, and I have Wang Bale and that can take over as the trebuchet master. I'm just going to buy our 6k worth of trebuchets, which is alright. We're doing pretty good on money. We're at 39k. And they actually only cost 742 a pop. It's not bad. She doesn't make the best administrator, only minus 5% construction cost and 3k pop growth. But Hidong is a really strategic position, so I feel like it is important to just make sure it's well defended. We'll now pull Wang out of the army, and we'll put Sima in, might as well. The dude comes with two mounted archers, which I don't know if they're all that good. But he can also recruit heavy crossbowmen, which are really tanky. Let's give him some of these babies. I actually didn't notice this, but apparently Liu Bi declared war on us, I think, last turn. And he's sending over an army, as well as Dong Pi Shan is sending over an army towards Chang'an. And we're just kind of having Zhang Jiang play defense, while our other two armies press on towards Baxi's large town and livestock farm. And we're going to be able to do both those battles right now. Despite our superior forces, our advisors predict a crushing defeat at Baxi's livestock farm. We have 1k, they have 1682, but we can fight it as a night battle. Will that change anything? thing. No, it still says we're going to get a crushing defeat. We definitely will not delegate this, that's for sure. This livestock farm is really upgraded. It's probably at least level 4, maybe even level 5 with that big of a retinue. 1700 units is pretty fat. Alright, so we're going to put our units in the very back here because we already know they're going to charge us. One thing that does suck is it is snowing, and so I'm pretty sure our trebuchet's explosive rounds do not do as much damage. I guess they do explode, it's just... Yeah... Okay, maybe they do just as much explosive damage. I don't know why, but I was just not expecting them to run this early, and I was feeling like this could be closer, because they do have these Spear Warriors, which are medium infantry, and they're higher tier than G Militia, so I was just thinking they might be able to do something to us, like maybe make it in a bit further, but eh, it's not looking like it. Oh, that's a direct hit. Those guys are done. Question now is, do we sack and withdraw for the 20 of me? I don't think so because I can't currently re-upgrade the livestock farm. And yeah, it's currently a livestock estate, which is a tier 4 upgrade. And we do not currently have the tech for that. We'll now take out the large town of Boxy. And they only have 481 units. I may just delegate this. I feel like we're only going to lose 100. Cannot yeah, we lost silence. 80. I'll just take that outcome. And we will sack and withdraw this for the 15 infamy and 5k. Because it's only a large town. Like, we can upgrade it back to a large town really easily. Oh, and we got Dilu. I got this on my last playthrough. It's a really sick horse. It's 80 speed. I believe it's the fastest horse in the game. And whoever you give it to pretty much cannot be captured. Like, say that army loses a battle. So you want to give it to someone who you really do not want to lose. And I think that someone would actually be Zhang Yan for now. Especially because he's leading the assault force. And say we get ambushed or something and we get into a really bad battle. He probably won't be captured. The horse also does increase our chance of avoiding ambush as well. All right, well, it's time to end turn, and we're going to see if Liu Bi goes for Hidong, which I think he probably should. Um, we do have the six trebuchets there, but he can't really go for Chang'an. Dongbin declared war on us, and this is actually kind of bad because we're going to lose a lot of income. Yeah, we're now losing 2200 per turn. Liu Zhang came back for Boxy's Toolmaker, which is also part of the reason why we're losing so much per turn now. And so the plan is we're going to have Zhang Yan play a bit of defense on him. Him, go back and retake Boxy's Toolmaker and try to take him out. And we're going to have Wang Fu press on towards Chengdu, his large city, which has a sack value of 10k. This is his capital, and if we take this out, he's really going to be hurting. So we got Liu Bi sending over three armies with his insane generals. I'm thinking we upgrade Hadong to a city for 3.2k. Instant construction will cost 3.3. And so that was 6k, but I think it will be easier to defend. I put Zhang Kai in the city and gave him 6 archers, as he's got the perfect upgrade path for archers. I'm thinking that's all I'm going to do though, and we're just going to hope that it can hold out with what we've currently got. Liu Zhang made kind of a mistake, and I think we can catch him with Zhang Yan. He's going to retreat, no doubt, but we might have the movement to chase him down. Oh, uh, not quite. He is extremely cornered, and he's not going to be able to move much next turn because he is in a forest. 
a hilly forest at that so good luck getting out of that next we're gonna go for Chengdu with Wang Fu's army and apparently the large city garrison is actually not that big by itself he obviously doesn't have any defensive buildings in it or it would have a larger garrison I do find it kind of hard to care that much about this battle because the main battle which is gonna decide pretty much if this playthrough is gonna be successful is the one that's about to come at Hidong if we lose Hidong and in turn lose Emperor Zion we're gonna end up losing like 1500 more income and that's gonna be really bad for us. This archer unit is running and I haven't even targeted it with anything. It's just getting hit from splash damage, I guess. All right, we took them out and their population is 1.1 million. Sacking withdrawing is going to remove 80% of that, but it will give us infamy and 10k. And with that, we will end turn. I believe if Liu Bi wants to follow this road, he's gonna have to cross this river twice. And I don't know if the road going over the river will make it easier for him to get to us, but I'm just hoping that will slow him down a bit. So Zhang Jiang will be able to get over here. Oh yes, he's fighting us. He should have just ran because he could have met up with his other army and we couldn't have caught up to him if he just marched. This way we can actually take out one of his armies. So Yidong will be 2v1 instead of 3v1. It is extremely important that we do not lose many units here. Their generals can't cast because of white water. That's actually so funny because they have decent abilities. Like they have unyielding earth, which gives evasion and charge resist. These Yi archers are no, dragon's gaze, so they can't me. move. And they're about to be, oh my lord. We're done for. They have literally yes, two left. Yes, good. And Liu Yu thinks that's a good thing. They have so many cavalry over here just grouped up. Lubu is about to get a huge rage on them. Oh my lord. Shut up and die. <laughs> All their cavalry are gone. No, we're not taking that duel. <laughs> that was four retinues. That was four retinues of cavalry that are, now they're all fleeing. They were pretty much full HP. We're gonna try to hit a dagger on Liu Yu, cause he does have unbreakable. We're gonna have to kill him, I think. What a hit. Yep, got him. He's gonna be not feeling too good after that. Binding Fury on him too. I think she actually missed Binding Fury, but it's looking like it's not gonna matter. He's dead in like one combo. The thing about Liu Yu was that I think he's like Liu Bei's son or something. So I don't think he would join us for sure. He does have resilience though, so he didn't die. But we did kill the other two, unfortunately. Oh, we got his item. And yeah, he won't join us like I thought. We got his good chest piece though. And yeah, we're going to have to unfortunately execute him. And Liu Bei is not happy about that one. It looks like he did cross both the rivers and he's getting close. After that battle, Lubu is now level nine and we can get him Smoldering Fury. I said earlier on the playthrough, I don't think this ability is all that amazing because I don't think he can really stack it up unless he's in a duel. And the thing about duels is that evasion is really important, more important than damage, I think. I'm gonna see if I can figure out a way to stack this up to five without having to be in a duel. Cause if you do stack it up to five, not only does it give a bunch more damage, but it also causes terror. So nearby units will flee and I think they will We'll just flee for like 10 seconds or something and there's like a cooldown on it but as far as i know it will work on troops that are even like full morale liu bei replaced all three of these generals and we might be able to kill three more of his generals this turn even though they do all have resilience so we would have to just capture them and execute them in order to actually kill them they're gonna run though i think not far enough though we have a relatively decent chance to capture them, 40, 65, and 65, and they only have 364 units. He may have just fed us three free generals. They're getting close. We're going to use Dragon's Gaze, and now they can't move. They're just stuck sitting there just getting pelted by arrows. Their generals can move, but their units can't. And then let's just Poison Blade this girl too. She can't miss in point blank range, I don't think, right? Wait, she actually missed that. Oh my god. What just hit Lu Bu? He lost so much HP and like I was keeping him back for the entire battle and we captured two of their generals and that army is now gone. We do have another upgrade for Zhang Jiang now it looks like. We brought her all the way over here to pick up Poison Blade. But now we'll go for Tenacity of Steel which gives her more damage the longer she is engaged in melee combat and I don't know if this works the same way as Smoldering Fury. I'm assuming it does and it only really works well in duels. Next we do have Liu Zhang cornered and he did set up an encampment basically taunting us like I dare you to attack me which we will. We do have composure for fire arrows so we can burn down the makeshift towers. All right this side's burning and this side's burning as well so we're gonna pull our archers back. These towers will also burn and so will these. 
so his whole encampment was really all for nothing. I mean, yeah, the towers did end up killing like 20 archers, but that's about all it did. And this time around, we're using the turtle stance trick. Two of their archers are just draining arrows, as well as their crossbowmen actually, it looks like. They're all just draining their arrows and they're not hitting us at all. I had to toggle it on and off like probably six times, but... They eventually gave in. This archer militia is now draining all of their arrows into our spear infantry. I feel like we may be able to do this without taking really any casualties, much less than if we were to fight them like on the open field, for example, because his units are just kind of chilling, like they're not really charging us, and we're just kind of picking apart his G militia with our archers. We captured Zhang Quan, who has this really nice robe of the omen maker. It's an exceptional robe which gives nine cunning versus six. He's enigmatic, so he gets six extra cunning, but then he's uncomplicated, so he loses four cunning. The question is do we end turn with Zheng Jing in the yellow river made by IP freely? Because if we do, can Liu Bei come over here and attack her? It's showing that they do not have the range, so I think we should be okay. And we got Dong Min trying to take out our silk trader, which no one really cares about this battle, but I do have to fight it because I definitely think we can win. We really only care about what happens at Hidong, but we will give Dong Min a bit more screen time as he's attacking our Silk Trader with 1100 units, we have 1300, and we have towers, and it's looking like his strat is just to attack from one side, which may actually be a bit more difficult as we only have two towers hitting them. They're not being very smart with their archers as two of them are already down, but the main thing is they're firing on our Saber Militia with their archers, which is not smart. They should be firing on our archers with their archers. They also have two groups of Mounted Lancer Militia, which we really need to take out ASAP. Looks like he did actually take my advice and now he's attacking our archers with his archers. He broke through our lines with his strategists, I guess, but he's not getting any progress on capturing the towers. We just have too many units in here. This channel's about to run, he's blinking, and the strategists are just kind of chilling, just watching everything Look, unfold. The enemy run. Well, she did have resilience, but unfortunately we did not capture her. Well, thanks for the free money anyways, I guess. Liu Bei is laying siege to Hanzong, and I actually should have done this earlier, but we can do assignments, organized guerrillas, 15% extra attrition to hostile forces, and bandit patrols for minus 10 military supplies. But I feel like we should just try to fight this on the open field, as our units are suffering attrition. So the longer we wait, the less units we're going to have. Although, we could actually attack Liu Bei in a night battle, and his secondary army will not help him. The game autosaves when you enter this battle screen, and so I was able to fight this battle multiple times. This was the best outcome I got, and I was able to wipe out his whole army, but I just could not figure out a way to take out his generals, as most of our army is archers and trebuchets, and they do pretty much next to nothing against generals. Unfortunately, what I didn't realize is having Zheng Jiang end her turn in the water meant that her units and mainly Lu Bu could not replenish their HP and so she had to march over to Hidong and help out with a very wounded Lu Bu. First of all we cannot fight it as a night battle because Sima Yi does not yet have the upgrade composure which by the way he's only about 40k XP away from being able to get. Because of this Liu Bei's secondary army was able to help out and he brought in 1900 more units. I would have been more okay with this trade-off if Lu Bu was full HP going into it but since he was so wounded I really wasn't sure if it was going to be worth. The enemy is sending in a couple saber cavalry really early and so we're gonna focus these guys down first i don't really know why they're doing this but hey that's a free retinue of saber cavalry that are completely done for i have no idea what they were thinking with that one and they're sending in guan yu by himself okay, he's all alone like i don't know why the enemy sent him in by himself Let's see this dagger will hit it did not hit it hit our own units did not know that was a thing that could happen guan yu's going down like this is actually really good Lubu got him, I think, with a nice spear. He's flashing. Like, he might end up running. Or he might just get killed. Yeah, he's down. And that actually might not be good because Zhang Fi now enraged. Binding Fury on him. Lubu got him a little bit there. Oh, yeah. Good Binding Fury on him. Ooh, Zhang Jin got hit really hard there. Okay, Zhang Jin got the dagger off. Let's see if she can hit him. Oh, missed. Oh, no. Zhang Jin fell. Lubu's going to enrage, I think. I guess he didn't enrage. That's not good, but Zhang Fi is pretty low. If Lubu can just get a charge off on him, he actually might run. Come on, get him with the charge. Oh, crap. He's about to run. Yeah, he's running, actually. Okay, now Lubu needs to just use rage on Liu Bei. Hopefully not get killed here. He's so low. 
I think that totally missed or something. Did no damage to him. On the bright side, a lot of their units are running, and Wing Bolin got killed. I wasn't even paying attention to her. I think she's not dead, though. I'm pretty sure she has resilience. I really hope, because she's one of our better strategists. Oh, we got more reinforcements coming in. It's because there were too many units on the field, so all of our reinforcements couldn't come in. Liu Bei is still up, but we do have three infantry, and they're actually taking him out. He is going down slowly but surely. Liu Bei went down. Okay, that's really good. We still have infantry up too. And like this channel is running. They have a couple units over here. I don't know how many actually. And like I could fight this over, but I think that was honestly one of the better outcomes because the enemy suicided in Guan Yu at the very start. There we go. I think that's it. Oh, they have a trebuchet. They have four trebuchets over here. We're going to send Lu Bu in on the trebuchet. And will it... Oh, it's actually firing at us. It's not firing at Lu Bu though. And here comes Rage. Oh, that trebuchet has gone. Okay, now it's fleeing. Holy crap, we actually won that. I could rematch this and make sure that our generals don't die. Like, Sima Yi got killed, the legendary strategist we just picked up. And I'm hoping he has resilience. Like, there's no way he doesn't, right? Oh god. <laughs> it's gonna autosave. As soon as we see the results, it's gonna autosave. So, we're just gonna go with it. Like, whatever happens, happens. We captured Liu Bi. And we got his Shang Gu Jians. Oh, we captured the God of War. And he won't join us. No, but we get his Green Dragon Crescent Blade. Oh my god, he's so good. Like, I do not want to kill him, but we get both their unique weapons if we kill them. We have to do it, right? Like, Liu Bei is our main opposition. Yep, we're gonna kill him. A clean Did our strategist die? She has resilience, and he has resilience. Phew. We didn't actually lose any of our generals. The only one of their generals that gets away is Zhang Fi. Wait, where's Zhang Jiang? She's dead. But no, she's not. Why is she at the court though? She's completely out of the army. Like, wait, what happened? Zhang Fi will get away and he will fight another day. But it's not even over. Like, Gan Sing Zan is sending over not just this army, but he has another army with him, which is like right here. I just can't see it right now. And they're both full armies. And Liu Bei actually has a fourth army that we're gonna have to kill. And it looks like, oh no, they're coming back. Liu Bei? Well, Liu Bei is dead now, but whoever's currently controlling his faction is now laying siege to Hidong yet again. This means that our units will not replenish, and not only that, we will be suffering attrition, so we'll be losing HP on all of our units that we currently have in Hidong, including our generals, and Liu Bu does not have much more HP left. He could very well die to attrition when we do end turn. I did give Lu Bu 6 mounted Saper Militia, as well as I recruited a Sentinel and gave him 6 Geon Sword Guards, but they are extremely low HP and they did not get time to replenish before we got Siege on again. If we do attack them in a straight up battle, we have 500 and they have 2000, and though it may look like it, all hope is not lost. There are two things we can do to get out of this situation without losing the city, and I want to see if any guys can figure out in the comments section. Even if we do play that situation right, we're not completely out of the woods yet because Gong Sun Zan has two armies currently marching on Chang'an, as well as Dongmin decided to send over an army. And if you guys are liking this series and you do want to see a next episode, then drop a like. These take quite a while to edit and record, but if you guys do like it, I will make another one. And thank you all for watching. I will see you in the next video.